your kind of break into that starting lineup. It's about stringing together performances where you execute and you know the team can count on you, and she's starting to do that. A big jump serve from Shaftmaster, handled well by the Demon Deacons. Swing near side for another freshman. And for Carolina, not a bad start if you're looking towards the future. You have Nolan and Foster, two freshmen, getting kills. Well, it's a great one-two punch, and you're right, Kyle, looking to the future. Just starting off right now, the bar is pretty high for these freshmen and what they've been able to produce, and just really impressive stuff. Top of the screen, that's Ashley Slater sending it over for Wake Forest. And a double hit going to be called. May the libero trying to get a long set up to the near side for Thurman. Yeah, she definitely wants that one back, Kyle. And a lot of these matches are gonna be decided on your out of system attacking, how efficient you can be, how many quality swings you can get in those spots. So I'm sure she'll have a cleaner set the next round. Down the middle for Nolan and a block set up. Yeah, that's... And the Ogogar. <laughs> Ogogar. Made a great read one-on-one. -on -one. If you're a middle blocker, you want to track the opposing middle and her angle of approach and take court away. If you can get a stuff block one-on-one, -on -one, it's a momentum play, especially this early in set one. Shaftmaster with the back line swing. Oh, the great equalizer coming to life here on our first attempt. And North Carolina has a great offensive system in that their outside hitters normally play six rotations. You've got that back row option always available. And so you have to account for that on defense, especially when it's an off pass. May coming off a good performance on Friday. Only player with double digit digs. There's a block for the Tar Heels. <laughs> you see a great double block here. If you want to be a good blocker, you have to have great footwork. And watch number seven, Sadie Swift. You know, she leads this team in blocks for a reason. She anticipates extremely well. She's very disciplined in the seam. Good blocking technique. The block set up by Carolina. Wake Forest able to get another chance. Not the second time, though. Swift involved, except on the near side. Again, it's the freshman, Romani Thurman. And here's one thing we're seeing early, Kyle, is that the last three sets, that have gone to the offense of Wake Forest have seen double blocks across from them in different tempos. So obviously Wake Forest is reading very well. Their eye sequencing is on par right now. They're having great blocking presence. So see if Wake Forest is gonna do something a little different offensively, maybe try to quicken up their tempo to get some seams in that block. Got called for a double hit there and a nice run at the service line here for Maddie May. We'll see what kind of second best server on the Star Heel team besides Shaftmaster. She definitely can apply service pressure, and that's one point I'm curious coming into this match. If there's a, an Achilles heel for the Demon Deacons, it's been in the serve and pass game. They are number one in the ACC and opponents serving aces against them. For Carolina, they forced a Wake Forest timeout. Maddie May continuing to serve for the heels. Deacons handle that one well, but the block is just <laughs> dominating. We talked about that a little bit amongst ourselves during the break. It's the difference in the game right now. It, it really is, Kyle. The net presence for the Tar Heels has been spot on. And even then, we go with a faster tempo, back set, but the one-on-one -on -one blocking presence, you know, you think you got a see, maybe you got a chance to score, but the blockers for the Tar Heels are just making great reads. Carolina averages just over two blocks a game, or two blocks a set, already with three here. And that's the second backline kill for Shaftmaster. You have to anticipate, if you're playing North Carolina, that that back row bick or pipe option is in play, especially if the setter's a little off the net, you know, and we have to defend that with some discipline and make that adjustment. So far, Shaftmaster's hitting that ball to that one six seam in the backcourt. We'll see if they make an adjustment. Try to go quick down the middle, and again, the blocker's there. Not sure if it was a block or in the net. Either way, that's another North Carolina point. Wake has got to find some way of stopping this run before it gets too late. They're running out of runway with that for sure, and credit the Tar Heels and their blocking presence. Again, Swift is just so gifted as a blocker, and her technique is spot on. If you want to see 
Great middle blocking. Watch number seven in blue. Her quick step, her check movements, she can anticipate what the opposing setter is going to set before it leaves her hands. Just a sophomore out of Austin, Texas, and that's one of the reasons that Tar Heel fans are excited about the future under first-year head coach Mike Shaw. You, you talked about the freshman that got the first couple of kills. There's a sophomore in the middle. Shaftmaster, by the way, still has another year to come <laughs> back and play. Wake finally ends this run. 9-0 Carolina was on, and the kill for Olivia Frank, the senior. Yeah, Frankie just really seeing that sharp cross available but think about what they did there that was the fastest tempo set we had seen so far they may have to go to almost that zero tempo or you know 0.5 tempo if you will to try to beat the block Barron out there setting and a kill on the top of the screen Imani Foster started her career at Charlotte has had quite a season in her last year we're in Carolina Blue uh, she just sees the court so well and it's a two, two prong, you know, recipe right now for the Tar Heels. It's great blocking and offensively, they're hitting a pretty high clip. So Wake Forest has to figure out a way to manufacture points, but also defend a little bit better. That big hitting percentage, something that has carried over from Friday's sweep of Virginia Tech. There's Swift, we talked about her a moment ago, and she made you look real good right there. <laughs> She's. She's someone that you have to account for at the net when you're running your offense because, again, she, it's very hard to deceive her or give her a look that she's not going to anticipate. So you have to run your offense, I think, very quickly. You have to have multiple first tempo attacks coming into her zone to try to keep her preoccupied because if it's a vanilla type offense, she's going to get in your face with two hands every time. Babic sent that one long. The service error gives it back to Wake, who's going to return the favor with a long serve. I mentioned North Carolina coming off a very strong attack performance against Virginia Tech. They may have understated it. They hit 420 for the match. Not a single player was below 300. That's amazing. If you're going to do that in this league, you're going to have success, right? I mean, that's, that's upper echelon efficiency from the offensive standpoint. And when you couple that with service pressure, now you're keeping your opponent on the heels, which is what they're doing currently to Wake Forest. And if you're the Demon Deacons, you need to shorten the game right now. This is a pretty sizable lead. We just need to string together some mini runs, right? Let's get two points together. Let's get three points together by serving tough ourselves and playing great defense. The ace followed by an error from Foster. Set near side. Nice little hesitation and adjustment from Maria Miggins, the grad transfer. Yeah, a little campfire defense there, Kyle. And if you're trying to claw yourself back into the set, these are the balls that you need to dig. You need to defend. If your opponent's going to give you anything off speed, that's when your eyes need to get big and you have to go after it. Wake Forest, the team that averages about two blocks, just like North Carolina per set, but it has been such a difference. Just one block for the Demon Deacons, three so far for Carolina, and we saw even Swift getting a kill on something that was a jump ball in the middle. That net play is just so impressive right now for Carolina. Yeah, in the short term, Wake Forest needs to figure out something they can do offensively when Swift is in the front court, right? When she is blocking and you see the presence that she brings, you have to do a couple of things. It's either speeding up your offense or being smarter of how you're attacking the block. Knowing that she's going to be there, are you going to go more high hands? Are you going to try to wipe the outside of the hand? You know, are you going to come in with some aggressive deep throws? Just something to give them a different look because... Man, the way she's blocking now, Kyle, I don't know that I would just take full swings into that. I mean, you know, and you're asking your coverage to really work hard. How much is a credit to the servers for Carolina where they're being able to put the ball in a spot that they're kind of dictating the offense for Wake Forest? Yeah, we've seen some of that, but we've also seen some plays where Wake Forest has been in system and they've had all three options available and they've been able to run quick tempo and Swift has still been there. So <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, well, geez, coach, what do we do? I mean, no matter what we run, you know, you think if you're uh, one of the setters for Wake Forest, you might be scratching your head as a quarterback going, where do I throw the ball? You know, everybody's covered no matter what. And so you have to be a little creative, uh, maybe run some crossing routes, 
maybe deceive her eye sequencing a little bit, give her a couple different things to focus on, and maybe the best thing for Wake Forest is she's off the court right now. I was just going to say, as they go through the rotations, Carolina currently has Swift off the court, so an opportunity to maybe have one of those mini runs and get a couple points. Set for Nolan down the middle. Nobody there in the X. Oh, and pretty much in back-to-back -back plays, Carolina has scored on off-speed shots. That's one thing, you know, as you're coaching and trying to call back into a set is always number one. Don't let the easy stuff beat you, right? Make them take a full swing, make them serve tough, but nothing easy is going to score. So Wake Forest really needs to step it up on defense. Just one kill so far for the Demon Deacons as Shaftmaster gets a point and kind of just says, hey, this is the way the ball's rolling today. Hits the net, dances on it, and falls in. Yeah, it's, <laughs> you know, sometimes it's be lucky than good, right? Uh, but if you train, if you work hard, you anticipate good things happen, you start getting the good bounces. You know, so we see a few of those, those there. But credit Carolina, they came out really aggressive, really focused, they executed very well and it started with the net presence which will be a key factor for the rest of the match service error the third against the Tar Heels here in this set but still a 12 point lead for UNC Ryan Baker back to serve here for the Demon Deacons had one of her best games of the season Friday against Duke unfortunately it was in a losing effort but 35 assists Carolina just seems to have all the right answers right now for yeah, you know, you have one of your best servers in Baker. She's second on the team in service aces, and they pass her money, right? So in this moment, what Wake Forest needs are their consistent performers to be consistent now, right? You might not score, but we need to get North Carolina out of system. We need to get them out of sorts. You know, we need our defense to step up and start stringing together some positive plays. And at this point, 21 to 6, are you just looking to get some momentum to carry into the second set? 100%. You know, in our sport, things change so quickly, and it's such a fast momentum swing that if you can get a little rhythm going into set two, you can wipe the slate clean and mentally refocus and say, okay, you know, it's, it's a new set. But they need some positive things to happen here in a hurry. Barrett picks up the ace, the third of the set for the Tar Heels. Uh, just a tough serve, kind of fell off the table. You almost are in a defensive mindset when you're facing an aggressive server. It's not so much passing the target as much can we get a set and a swing out of it. Set was for Carney. She wasn't able to get the kill. Shaftmaster other way. Monty Thurman will get it done. Wow. And because of the off-speed that's scoring so efficiently for North Carolina, can the blockers for Wake delay their block a little bit so that they're going up anticipating tip and maybe get some positive touches there? I think that's gotta be another key. Three Tar Heels with three kills in this one. Nolan, Shaftmaster, and now Thurman. Slide by Wake Forest and that'll get it done. Ashley Slater. Now, first time we've seen a really good connection, setter hitter connection. I love that tempo. It created a seam. Just enough for her to get on the outside of Shaftmaster. You know, when your offense is struggling, you have to kind of manufacture some things. You don't have to be perfect, but you need good connections. And that was the first really good connection we've seen from the Demon Deacons. Upset for Shaftmaster. Top of the screen, and there's a block for Wake Forest. Well, we just talked about some momentum. You know, you want to try to work back in this set. It seems like a really tall hill to climb, but can we get some rhythm going into set two? And if they can string together a few more points, I think they'll check that box. Looking to make it three in a row. Back to Shaftmaster. This time, finesses it. Great dig as the Libero able to dive oh. in there. Crawford kept it alive, and Wake Forest has their longest run of this set. Well, and it's the first time that a tip hasn't scored. Right? And if you just keep the ball alive, if you can extend rallies, good things usually happen. They continue to serve it right at Foster. Free ball for the Demon Deacons. Set near side, blockers there, but it is going to go out of bounds. Another point for Wake Forest. I love what Wake Forest is doing. They're kind of settling in. 
They're paying better attention to defending those tips, staying assertive, and smartly attacking the block. They're going high hands, high seam. Those are when good things happen. Got set for Thurman. Had a couple of blockers in front, altered the shot. That one is going to be long. They tried to go back and get Slater on the top of the screen. Well, it was the right idea to go that high seam deep corner, just missed on execution. You know, and if you're North Carolina, you want to th keep things buttoned up right here, right? You don't want to give any extra momentum to wait going into set two. So let's play clean these next couple points. Let's put it away. Shockmaster with the big jump serve sends it long. As the match goes on, Kyle, it'll be very interesting to see the serving targets and where servers are going, who they're serving at to try to get the other team out of system. That's going to start to develop here. He handles that one well. Carolina quick passing, and Thurman gets her fourth kill. And I love that she went away from the off speed. You know, let's stay aggressive now. Let's put this set away. So far, Wake has only denied one ball at the net. So that's a green light for your attackers to stay assertive. May was the one who was on the service line for that 9-0 run. She needs just one run here, though. One point. And not going to get it on this one. Renke with her second kill. If you want to create seams in the block, one easy way to do that in a three-hitter rotation is to run a quick at the setter and keep your pin hitters at the pins. Because then that usually spreads the block for the opponent. If they dive in with a pin blocker, then you set that pin where they came from. But great one-on-one -on -one look there. Ronnie Foster at the top of the screen is going to get the kill and the set win for the Tar Heels. A dominating first set win for White got over the hump, but if I'm looking ahead in the crystal ball to next year, you know, 2024, I think Carolina is going to be a team that could make that jump. The only player that has put a, a big time emphasis on helping out this team that they would lose would be Imani Foster, the grad transfer. They also would lose Maria Miggins for next year. So you got a couple pieces that you'll have to replace, but sure. you think they've got enough in the youth and that young lady right there who's going to be a senior to, to really make some noise. I really do, and you factor in the transfer portal, you know, the, the incoming class, it, it negates, uh, well, maybe not negates, but it lessens the blow of losing a quality starter, right? Because there's a very good likelihood that you could go on the portal and find somebody who's been successful at another program for three, four, five, or four years. So, you know, I think that that's a big factor for them to kind of reload. Carolina got the first couple of points. Right back to serve. This is Ava Torres. And system shaftmaster near side and able to cut it. Two blockers set up and it didn't matter. Yeah, and if North Carolina is going to score that way, you just kind of have to tip your hat. You know, you look at Farrell, she was in a decent position, but it's just such a great shot that you know that shaftmaster is going to score some. I think you have to tip your cap on those. The rest of the game is Let's play better defense. Let's see if we can pass a little better than we did right there. You have to control the controllables, and those are areas that Wake Forest needs to improve if they want to extend this match. Violation gives the point to the Tar Heels. And you know, something we haven't mentioned yet, the record for Carolina, a 500 record, five and eight, you mentioned they've had close matches. Shaftmaster missed about three weeks of the season. Yep. That's a big factor, because it's in the middle of ACC play to where they're at versus maybe where they could have been. Oh, 100%. You know, we don't have the crystal ball, right? But it's not that far of a stretch to think if she had been healthy for those five or six matches, and those were matches we lost by four or five, would that have tipped the scale? Mm -hmm. And maybe so. Wake looking for some answers as Crawford sends it across. Shaftmaster from the back line. Blockers and tape got in her way. A double hit called. And that's the first time we've seen Wake Forest make that blocking adjustment against that big set to Shaftmaster. That's something you have to be mindful of throughout the rally, making that quick dynamic move. You cannot block that one-on-one. -on -one. Crawford with the short serve, it's gonna go into the net. You like what Wake Forest is trying to do early here in set two of mixing up their serves trying to pinpoint and locate different 
areas of the court, which they hadn't really done in set one, to manufacture some service pressure. We'll see if May can do it here for the Tar Heels. Well, I imagine their conversation was, hey, we can't let them hit 571 <laughs> and win this one, so we got to change some things up. Well, yes, and it's how you respond to great defense or net presence from your opponent. That happens in this sport. There's going to be a stretch of maybe four, five, six points where the other team just seems invincible on defense. And you can get frustrated offensively, or you can start to take inventory of what's happening and make some adjustments, and I think Wake Forest did that. Mani just pops that one over. Opportunity for the Demon Deacons to tie it up, and they'll do it. Carney with the first kill, the freshman out of Pittsburgh. That Usually you see that paintbrush kill happen in the middle. She didn't quite get, get a great contact on that, you know, but uh, we'll take it. Sure, that has to feel good for the freshman. That was her sixth kill, finally able to get a point. Sadie Swift back in, tops it over for the Tar Heels. Good positioning from May. Set out in front of Thurman, but she makes the adjustment. And so far we're seeing both teams pepper the court. They're making the opposing defense have great court coverage because we're seeing such a variety of shots. I love that deep corner throw to test the corners of the defense and get that middle back player maybe shifting one way and then it opens up the other corner. It's kind of that cat and mouse game we see in our sport. It almost looked like when Frankie saw the set off the mark, she came in a couple steps and that's what got the point for Carolina. Yep. It's just great recognition, you know, if you can see if you're underset a little bit and that blocker diving in, you're you're seeing that shot is open. It's Dior Charles, the freshman out of LA, getting the kill for Wake Forest. We talked about North Carolina's future and their youth. Demon Deacons, who are a team that you think are solidly in the tournament right now, they're a very young squad too. They are, and it's gonna be more for them. How do they respond in some of these bigger moments or kind of must-have moments, if you will? You know. You are seeing a different mentality from Wake Forest Volleyball, and Coach Randy Smart has really crafted that in her team with that culture and getting them to believe we can be in the tournament, we can be in the upper echelon of the ACC. So that youth, getting them there is one thing. And then the second thing is, how do you handle it, right? How do you handle the bright lights and the expectation? So I'm excited to see how they're going to respond. When I talked with her pre-match, I asked her, a team that is on the cusp of doing something the program hasn't done, who do you rely on out there when you don't have the experience? She said, honestly, that's the thing that we're trying to look for right now. Because we haven't been there before, who is it that can step up for us and be that leader? Sure, and that's a big question because whether it's in the NCAA tournament for the first time or on the road these last couple matches to really solidify your spot, you're gonna be tested and you're gonna be in those high pressure situations Someone's got to step up and rise to the surface and be that person that the rest of the team can look to in that moment. Carolina gets another home roll as that one on two somehow got over the tape <laughs> and then they get it back, set up swift, and she gets her second kill. Yeah, we're past Halloween, but a little hocus pocus, you know, a little, <laughs> little mojo helping that ball get through. It's Christmas season. What are you talking about? <laughs> we'll get the gifts early. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Swift will go back and serve now for Carolina. Much more competitive second set here. And you know, the first one started off this way. It was 2-2 and then it was a 9-0 run that Carolina went up yep. that really separated them. Well, now you're in a point where you're just kind of trading punches and the longer it goes where it's kind of neck and neck, the team that's serving tougher and passing better and the team that's attacking out of system more efficiently is probably gonna get that separation at the end of a set like this. Arrow ties it up at eight. That was another thing that I thought was interesting from Coach Smart. She said, uh, you know, when you look at our score sheet afterwards and we beat you, I want you to look at it and say, well, how did that happen? Because the stats don't show it. Right. She wants her team to do those little things that you just mentioned that add up to a win. Yeah. Ultimately, you want the score to reflect ability. You don't want to play up or down to your competition. You want your performance to be as fairly consistent as possible because there is a lot in this game that you can control. You can conserve, control your service pressure. You can control your aggressiveness and assertiveness on defense. You can control your communication in long rallies, those sorts of things. And the more you do that, you will start to see those statistical numbers kind of even out. 
Barron picks up her second ace of the match. First of this set for the Tar Heels. Back set near side and a kill. Good answer from Wake Forest as Slater picks up her second. Now we're starting to see just a better rhythm from the right side attacking of Wake Forest. You know, you see a really good tempo, good connection, one on one, good read. So the right side offense for Wake Forest starting to bear some fruit. Serve from Torrance. Shaftmaster near side. Wake able to pop it back over. Opportunity for the Deeks. Top of the screen and they'll get the kill. Yeah, and that rally started, Ron, uh, Kyle, with Ryan Baker having a great block touch off Shaftmaster. If you can slow her down just a little bit and give your defense an opportunity to make those quality digs, it's gonna make a huge difference. And you know, both teams kind of passing fairly consistently right now, so which team's gonna start having some service pressure will probably be key. Nolan down the middle, clipped the tape, but it stays in bounds to give Carolina the lead back. Yeah, I love that shot. Middle blockers, when they're one on one in the middle, that cutback shot to that right back sideline is usually going to score. Very tough to defend. One of three Tar Heels with five kills, joined by Shaftmaster and Thurman. Wow, great hustle. May with the bump set. Both teams hitting very well this set. 333 right now for Wake, 467 for the Tar Heels. They've only made one attack error each. There's the first block of the set for Carolina after three in set one. Yeah, and it starts with defense and passing, and you, you watch May here, just incredible absorbing that shot, giving her offense another chance in transition. You mentioned how efficiently both teams are hitting right now, and that's because of the passing. Both teams are passing pretty much dimes and being able to run whatever they want offensively. So whichever team can start to assert that service pressure, and it, it may not be serving harder, Kyle. It could be, are we going to hone in on someone or, you know, it's a personnel thing. Who are we going to target? Or it could be a zone that you're going after just to try to get them out of system and slow down their defense or their offense. Crawford serves it to Foster. Carolina able to get a good set for Thurman, but the blockers are there for Wake. Well, kind of trading punches right now. Both teams are having some positive touches at the net defensively. Good footwork, good elevation. Third block of the match for Wake Forest. Great pass again. This time they come to the near side for Foster. If one money can't do it, give it to the other. <laughs> yeah, that's just good setting, right? Uh, great rhythm, good shoulder load, beating the block with that tempo. Yeah, if both teams continue to pass like this, Kyle. This could be an offensive, you know, battle. Foster had the heavy load on Friday, had the most attacks for Carolina, and ultimately led them with 13 kills. Today, she's got just five swings, but she's been very efficient with four kills on those five. Yeah, she makes the most of her opportunities, but I love what May did there. That's the first time we saw the short serve and she got an ace. So again, it's not necessarily how hard you serve to apply service pressure, but if you can serve short well or move the ball around, you're probably gonna have success. And remember, she was the one who was on the service line when And you think of what he's building here in Chapel Hill. We mentioned the future you know, looks bright for the Tar Heels. And at this point in the season, we mentioned kind of playing spoiler. But with only three losses being sweeps out of their 11, they've been in so many matches. And so any momentum they can carry these you know, last remaining matches on the schedule, positive play is going to really springboard them into the spring training and into next fall. Wake had a big answer out of that timeout to get the point with May on the service line. A little bit of a scramble here. Momentum point on the line. Other side for Foster. Another backline swing for Crawford. 
So the points where you really got to dig wow. deep. And nice job by putting that one in the back corner. That's Imani Foster with their fifth kill. Well, and let's go back to they didn't have a great connection, Wake Forest, when they were out of system and set Crawford on the big, and she tipped short, but it was forecasted. Everybody could anticipate that. When you've got a back row setter on the opposite side, throw that ball to right back. Take that setter out of running the offensive transition and give your defense a better opportunity. I'd love to see her in that same situation. Make the setter play it in right back. It's gonna have a challenge. Trying to find out exactly what they're looking at. Seeing the replay, it was clearly touched at the net by Wade Forrest and it clearly fell in. Yeah, you're probably looking at was the attacker in the net, net before the ball was down. Um, you know, again, without knowing for sure, that would be one one guess here. Let's see. I'm just not sure what they can be looking at there. You do see the net move a little bit. Um, but yeah, that looks pretty cut and dried from our standpoint. We'll see if uh, the officials see anything we don't clearly. But this also serves as kind of a pseudo timeout. So. You know, Coach Smart said, hey, there might be an opportunity here for us to flip the score, but if nothing else, we need to slow down this momentum, you know, and try to get another mini run. They've been trading punches with the exception of about a three or four point run from Carolina off of their serve. And so they need to defend the serve for sure for the rest of this set and be mindful of that. You know, May had a couple of short serves that gave them fits. Will Carolina go back to the short serve coming out of this break? Uh, you know, are they still serve the deep third? But Wake Forest to really get the lead and try to tie this match up one set apiece, they need to stay assertive. And I think they need to be a little bit smarter in what they do out of system and making the setter play the first ball. Point to Carolina. I'm trying to read the body language of the referee explaining over there to Coach Smith, or excuse me, Coach Mark, what the explanation is. By the way, it stays as a point for Carolina. Yep. So a three-point lead here in set two for the Tar Heels. Babic serving. Overpass on the serve. Tried to keep that one on their side, and because of it, got into the net. Now, it again goes back to the service pressure. The difference in this set so far has been Carolina's service pressure has just been a little bit better than Wake Forest, and that's how you see this four-point spread. Better pass this time. They're able to get a bump set for Carney near side. <laughs> she finds the open court. Yeah, no doubt that Foster wants that one back. You know, that's those are the types of shots you don't want to score on you when you've got a lead. You're trying to keep another team from coming back. You want to defend the easy stuff. Third kill of the match for Carney, tied for the team lead. There's an overpass from Shaftmaster. Carney gets another kill. Um, Carney's fortunate there. May had a play at that ball. I think you want to be a little more assertive <laughs> putting that ball away and not give May any kind of chance. Love the pushback here from Wake Forest getting back into this thing. Baker serving another overpass from Shaftmaster. They go back to oh. Carney. In the antenna, yep. Eyes got a little big there. Said, may have had that sliver down the line and saw that opening and just didn't quite execute. But we saw the last two serves from the Demon Deacons go at Shaftmaster. So is that someone they're going to target the rest of this set? Wow, what a serve. Deeks get a swing off of it, but it's going to go long off the hand of Slater. Wake Forest has to be careful here. Two unforced hitting errors back to back to extend this lead for UNC. They, at this point in the set, they really got to take care of that ball, better ball control, keep the ball in the court, trust your coverage. Carolina with four different players that have five kills in this match. All of them, like on Friday, hitting above 300. Mabry Shaftmaster with the most swings. She's got 12, five kills, four digs for the junior. She has just done so much for this team throughout her career, but 
the way that she attacks the ball and how many different ways they can set her in the offense is really the factor. She's so hard to defend, you're not sure what she's going to run. She doesn't have the same shots every time, so you have to defend all 900 square feet of the court. And boy, Kyle, your blockers better be on her to take the easy, the meat of the court away and make her hit great angles. You know, that's number one, but she's just been so impressive for the Tar Heels. You talk with Mike Shaw and He'll talk about the work she puts in, not in the attacking part so much, but helping her game evolve on the defensive side. We've seen them serve her a couple of times, some bad passes, but he's really been impressed with how much she's worked at it to stay on the court for all six rotations. And that's really a testament to her honing her craft and understanding what teams are going to do if you're a dominant attacker, especially if you're in the serve receive, is they're going to make you play balls. They want to wear you down through volume, right? Because if you're a little tired at the end of the third and fourth set, then you're going to start having some hitting errors. Maybe we're going to take you out of your offensive rhythm. So she understands that. She understands that in her role, Teams are going to go at her. They're going to make her pass and dig a lot. We're already seeing that. So to be able to hold your own and have that ball control at a level where your team can trust you in those spots, now you're a full dynamic six rotation player. You're someone that doesn't really have that weak spot that the other team can exploit. And you can see that growth in the game stats. Two of the last three matches for Carolina, she's got a double-double. Obviously, yep. the kills are there, but the digs as well. Yep. Biggest lead of this second set for Carolina. Out of the Wake Forest timeout. They try the quick middle. Swift was there, just couldn't get the clean block, and it falls in for a Demon Deacons point. But I like what Wake Forest did there. Again, spreading the block, having three hitters across the court, kind of that one and a half tempo. So now you give Frankie an opportunity to see the block and hit around it. A bad air there only because of the timing. Aggressive serving, you're going to have some errors, but at this point in the set, trying to claw your way back before it's 2-0 Carolina. Yeah, you need to compound positive points. If you score, you need to try to work to score again and manage bad errors and timing, like you said, Kyle. You go back to those two back-to-back -back unforced hitting errors, which kind of started this mini run for Carolina, and that's a big difference in the set right now. Over Beck with the dig to keep it alive. Miggins, two blockers there. Here's the Demon Deacons opportunity. Crawford gets the kill. No, oh, wow. somehow kept alive. What a dig by Meyerhofer. Back to Crawford again. Great defense from the Tar Heels. Shaft Master to the back corner, but she goes wide. Oh my gosh. You look at the defense here and just taking that ball point blank, diving on the court, sacrificing the body. That's the kind of effort that you need to really close sets like this away and stop any hope of momentum for the opponent, especially in your home court. Marissa Meyerhofer coming off the bench, the junior with the big dig there. Couldn't get the point at the end of the play and Demon Deacon's looking for a run. Shaftmaster with a couple of swings and the touch. Wow. <laughs> Just so deceptive. Her body is facing hard cross court. You know, if you're Farrell and the defense, you're lining up expecting the cross court. Look at the chop shot. Just the high hand, thumb up, cutting that ball back. Very difficult to read her defensively. You just have to expect the ball, no matter what she presents and how she looks. Another quick middle. Frankie gets her fourth kill. Yeah, She's been efficient when they've gone to her. Four kills on six swings, no errors. She really has, and it's the, really the length. You look at just the level she's playing above the net, and her reach is giving her angles that a lot of middles don't have. So that's something that Wake Forest can take for the rest of this set and into set three. Do we see more Frankie involved in the offense? And ace. The first of the match for Wake Forest, and it comes at a big point, pulls them back within two. Wake Forest just needs to play clean these next couple of points. Don't give any bad errors, easy points to Carolina. And Carolina just needs to stay focused and keep their communication up. Try to get quality swings. A bump set there from Nolan, blocked at the net. Oh, wow. It's going to be a point for Carolina, though. Yeah. I think Romani Thurman is very fortunate that Carolina came away with that point. She went for a tip opportunity during that rally to a right back defender. 
And if you've got a front row setter on the net across from you and you tip short, that ball's going right up in system. So Carolina a little fortunate to get that point, I think. Good pass off the shaft master serve. Tar Heels with an opportunity to the X. Pancake kept alive by Torrance. Blocker's there, but they can't get it. Deakins with the point. You can't get the net dribbler. There's no defense for that shot. And uh, looks like Mike another Shaw challenge. Mike Shaw is going to challenge this right here. Whether that ball was up, probably, yeah. That was Ava Torrance diving in what would be her seventh dig of the match. But That's going to be a tough one for them to overturn because call on the on the court was that it was a good touch. Uh, and it all depends on the camera angle that they can see. You need to be able to see the ball clearly hitting the floor. And because it's so low and people are moving, I think she got under that. I, I think that's a good up. That looks clean to me, Kyle. Now, for the viewers, these are not the shots that the, the referees have down on the sideline. They have different cameras, different angles that they can look at. But from what we saw, I think this one's going to stay. Yeah, I would agree based on what we're seeing. Uh, but again, this is kind of that pseudo timeout. Even if you don't get the reversal of the call, you know, Wake Forest is carrying a little momentum right now. Yep. And so this is kind of that, hey, let's take a breather here. Let's refocus. Let's use that challenge as kind of that double-sided coin. If we don't get the, the call reversed, we kind of slow things down for a minute. But you're looking at some trends, and three of the last four attack attempts from the Tar Heels have been short tips. Now, either they talked about that at their last break or they have that, you know, in their mind that that's something that can either score or help us be successful. But with a front row setter for Wake, I don't know that that's a great strategy because if you don't score with it or you don't really place it extremely well. Kind of giving up some easy offense. Correct, exactly. You're kind of giving them a pseudo free ball to run their transition offense with that front row setter just waiting on that dig. So. I'm going to be very curious what Carolina does offensively in their next opportunity. Do they go full swing or do they continue to tip short? Taking a good long look at this one. Yeah, it's taking a little longer than I would have thought for sure. This is where, for my two cents, replay on any sport needs to have a time limit. If you can't come to a decision in that time limit, then whatever the call was stays. That's fair. I, you know, you hear arguments, pros and cons to both sides of it. On the one hand, we want to keep the game moving, right? Yeah. And as fast as volleyball is, I think the fans are used to the pace, and it's an exciting pace. It's what makes this sport, you know, the viewership is growing because it is an exciting pace of play. The flip side is you want to get it right. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to be able to have the correct call at the end of the day, especially with the set being this close. You know, that point swing could make a big difference, but... Uh, Little group dance, and that's one way of staying loose. <laughs> exactly. <the> yeah, that, <laughs> that is that is definitely a factor. If these things carry on, must pass the minute, two minutes, which we're kind of flirting with now, uh, you got to stay warm here. Maybe we'll get a little dance battle between the teams as we, this carries on a little bit longer, right? We got spirit. How about we're, you? We're not going to play the rest of the sets. It's going to be a crowd decision on dance battle. We got two North Carolina crowds. I mean, teams. Right. Crowd yeah. could be split. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Or, or hey, Kyle, how about this? Instead of the time limit, you know, keep the call. If it goes past two minutes, dance battle to decide who gets the call. There to go you go. Way. I like I, it. I like I, that. I think yeah. you're onto something good. We're going to bring a... that to the NCAA committee this offseason. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully that doesn't get tabled, but uh, five-second dance battle, go. <laughs> I think he wins. <laughs> All right, looks like we finally got a decision. All right. Yep. Stay what it was. Yep. So point to wait, two-point set. Demon Deacons will be on the serve. Yeah, based on what we saw, and even though the official did have some different angles, it looked pretty clear to us that she got under that ball. I, I couldn't imagine another angle that would show anything, you know, different. So, Kendall Phillips, the junior, going to check in and serve here for Wake. Who does she target at this point? You know, usually when you make a serving substitution, it's usually a server who can pinpoint their serve, and there's somebody she's specifically going to go after. We'll see who that is.
Deep serve, it's gonna go out of bounds. Ooh. Looked like she was trying to go to Foster. Yep. If you've got a outside attacker in the pattern, they're usually on an alley or in the five or one zone, you know, to a sideline. If you can back them up to pass the ball, it gets them out of rhythm, out of rhythm to take their approach. So that's one strategy. You look like she just hit that a little long. Wait, gonna take a timeout now. All of these breaks because of replays, and you said, hey, these are kind of pseudo timeouts. You're able to save a pocket them for this situation. Wake desperately needs to get a couple of points right here. Yeah, and North Carolina has done some good things offensively, but Shaft matchers in the back row. You have to be ready for that big, that, that pipe coming out of the back row. But we need to play clean. We can't give up anything easy. And I don't think that North Carolina's offense has been that dominant compared to Wake Forest that you have to go for the ace, right? Especially with the score being what it is. So assuming Wake Forest can get it a side out, I think their serving strategy needs to be, let's put a, a, a good ball in play to the weaker passer that we want to target and trust our defense. Because we have to manufacture a couple points or the set's gone, right? And then we're down 2-0. If you're Carolina, it's really about focusing in on defending the serve. You know, well, right now they're serving, but can we finish out with some aggressive swings and nothing easy scores? You don't want to tip or roll to catch you off guard and give an easy point to Wake Forest. Tar Heels up one set to nothing. Dominated that first one, 25 to 12, but really a dogfight here in set two. And It'll come down to the little things here to finish this one off. Maddie May, who was on the service line for Carolina for a run in the first set as well in the second, goes back to serve here. Does she go back to the short serve where she had an ace during her last service term? Targets Phillips. And there's a kill. Frankie on a little slide. <laughs> And we see that length coming into play again. That wasn't really a fast tempo set. Frankie just hit over the block. And if you've got someone who can play at that elevation and that reach, take advantage. No libero on the court for Wake Forest. Near side of Monty Foster gets the kill. That little seam in the block and she found it. Always tough when you're at this point in the set, you know, you have that serving middle go in and play, and when your libero's not on the court, can you hold up defensively? North Carolina just one more point to go up 2-0. Babbitt on the serve. Set for Carney, top of the screen. Great placement from her. Well, and we saw a couple of net dribblers score over there. So someone on the Wake Forest side said, hey, that zone seems to be open <laughs> if we can get the ball there. So heads up play right there by Carney. Just a freshman with a veteran move right there. This is about pinpoint serving right now. Who do you go after? Serve from Baker. Shaftmaster overpass. Kept alive, though. Carolina gets a chance. They go to Foster to the X. Another pancake. This time it's from Farrell. Huge swing. Carney with the kill. Wow. And Wake Forest is very fortunate to come away with that point. Because first time in the tournament, if there's any chance that we could have a first round, you know, quad at our home facility, that's huge. As easy as possible. Yeah. I mean, you know, so that's a, a key factor. Um, you know, they the want to recent, take care of those matches for the sure. The most recent projection I saw had them playing against a five seed. It was Florida in this projection, but probably want to get yourself a little bit better seating there so you don't have to go up against number five team. 100 percent and just to be clear it's not necessarily just winning those matches but how you win those matches the ncaa tournament committee when they're looking at seating they totally factor in how you perform down the stretch your last three four matches you know so if you win but it was on paper an inferior opponent did you go four sets? Did you go five sets? Was it a struggle? Annabelle Daly heard you. She's ready for the dance battle. <laughs> yeah, she's getting it warm for when that rule passes you know, next year. She'll be ready to go. <laughs> so we showed you Wake Forest schedule. Spoiler alert, next game, same for North Carolina. They'll
it's a tough road to hoe. They've got some really aggressive opponents. And a big challenge, they win it. It's an anticlimactic way of taking the set, but it's point twenty-five for the Tar Heels, and they'll head to the locker room with a 2 nothing lead. Make a season, though, if you're the Tigers. Go ahead and, and beat the, the team that was in the Final Four last year. Might be there again this season. 100%. Tar Heels go right to Shaftmaster to start things off here in set three. Defense gets it done for Wake Forest, and they'll get on the board first as Frankie picks up her team high sixth kill. We talked about it before the break, Kyle. Can we see more Frankie? She's been unstoppable so far. That one consistent offensive cog for Wake Forest, and she's already getting volume here. How about that note? First time today that Wake Forest has had the lead. Wow. <laughs> Tar Heels try to slide. Good defense on the backside. Wake Forest puts it over. A free ball for the Heels. Nolan can't get the kill, or maybe she does. Good hustle. Back to Thurman again. This time she gets it done. I love going right back to Thurman. You know, if the defense has a read on you and you get a good swing, I love when setters go right back to that attacker because you can mix up your shot, maybe add a little more pace. But that just shows trust and gets them in a better rhythm. That's one way for your attackers to really feel the flow. The Monty's pacing this Tar Heel offense today, each with seven kills. There's the block for the Tar Heels. Fifth of the match. Yeah, and such a tough angle. When you're more than five feet off the net, you have to adjust your shot as an attacker. This set was about six, seven feet off the net. You can't snap the ball down in that situation because you make it almost impossible for your coverage to, to pick it up. Passing off the Shaftmaster serve. A dig for Maddie May. Look at May. Gives the Tar Heels a chance. Slide for Frankie. Couldn't... Couldn't get the connection there. Backline swing and just somehow off the elbow, I think. Wow. Kept alive by Crawford. Scrappy defense for Dima Deacons. And the block. Out of bounds. Wake Forest with the point. And this just shows you, this illustrates that if you're just scrappy, if you've got tenacious defense, good things happen. Just keep working. Keep the ball off the floor. The longer you can extend rallies, usually that favors that team. Crawford had the right reaction. You see Shaftmaster with a full swing from the back line. Turn around and get ready for a pass. Correct. Didn't expect it to hit the tape. There's the slide. Second time it's worked for Frankie and the Deeks. Yep, and a good connection. You know, the time before that, she was a little early in her approach and didn't get a good contact on the ball. If she can get that good setter hitter connection consistently, I think she can help Wake kind of get some separation here in set three. Seven kills, no errors on 12 attacks for her. Almost got an ace. Block for the Demon Deacons. Carney was there for the solo job. Wow, the elevation. And talk about a monster block in your face with Frankie and Carney. Look at the length and the reach. Great footwork getting outside. It'd be interesting to see if Thurman stays aggressive in their next opportunity. Deep serve to May. Set down the middle for Nolan. Kept alive by the libero, Farrell. But both liberos playing at a high level. <laughs> Carney finds an opening. <laughs> the and best run of the day for Wake Forest. But those are the kinds of sequences, those long rallies that Wake Forest has been used to most of the season. Let's play great defense. Let's have better ball control and get quality swings to finish it. That's one of the first times we've seen that recipe work for Wake Forest today. But think about the liberos and what we're seeing. And we have the freshman of the year last year in the ACC and the libero of the year in the ACC. So two defenders with high accolades that are getting it done for, for their teams. And if this continues and we go into extra sets here, Kyle, I think the liberos could very well decide it. May with a team high six digs for Carolina. Farrell has matched her, but Torrance with seven. It's the a service error will give it back to Carolina and end that 5-0 run for Wake Forest. And I'm okay with that error. You know, you've got the lead. You want to stay assertive. We'll call that a good miss. Mm -hmm. It hit the top of the tape, right? You have to absorb some of those. So, you know, we just got to get back with a good pass here, get back in rhythm. Who else? 
First Frankie, then Carney. Neither could get it done. Third time, Swift sends it back over. Carney again. Tar Heels will set up the offense. Top of the screen, Imani Foster with a big wow. swing. And Wake gets the point. Wow. Boy. The, the assertiveness of just keeping the ball off the floor, off an aggressive swing, keeping your hips low, driving through the ball. I'd like to see Frankie work a little harder in transition in those moments because you're kind of one dimensional if all of those defensive you know, ups are all going to the outside. As a middle blocker, you want to continue to work in transition and be an option for your setter, especially if you've been scoring. Heads up play by Carolina setter right there. Barron steals a point. Frankie will go to the bench with seven kills and a couple of blocks. I like what Wake Forest is doing, having that little three-point separation off good offense, setting the hot hand in Frankie. You need to focus on just set three. You have to wipe the slate clean from sets one and two and treat this as the beginning of a new match. There's the block for Carolina Swift back in the game. Yeah, and I'm seeing a trend here. When Wake Forest is set off the net, this set again is about seven, eight feet. You look at where Carney took off from the 10 foot line. You can't snap that ball down when you're that far off the net or you go into the block. You have to aim high hands when you're off the net. Swift with a touch again at the net. Not gonna get that one. Huge swing from the back line for Crawford. And Wake Forest taking a page out of UNC's book. You know, UNC done, has done that a lot with Shaftmaster and scored a bunch of points. And we see Wake Forest using that same philosophy. I'd like to see them use that a little bit more because they're one-on-one -on -one as far as a blocker hitter standpoint. Set for Swift. Right to the defense. Baker was waiting. Both teams taking the setter out in transition. Blockers there. May kept it alive with Swift. Wow. Foster got oh, it over. Wow. Scramble mode. Deeks will bump it back. And Imani will put it away. Wow. Even though they don't get the point this time, this is the defense you're talking about. Well, it's just that quick hip turn and scrappy play by Farrell. We talked about the liberos, and earlier in that rally, May makes a great play in coverage, so both of these liberos are playing at a high level. If you're a young defensive player watching the match, look at these two liberos, how hard they're working in their posture. They're the example that you want to set for great defense. Carney able to get the kill, use the blockers to her advantage that time. Picks up her sixth of the match. Overpass and an ace. Wow. A rare shake from May, but credit Carney on the serve. That ball was dying fast when it came off her hand and crossed the net. You almost have to just defend that ball and get it up. Biggest lead for Wake Forest, 10-6. Better pass from May that time. Shaftmaster down the sideline, can't keep it in bounds oh, though. Wow. Now she wants that one back. I mean, that was a great rip. She had the alley down the line, just missed by an inch or two. But credit, credit Wake Forest, they're serving tough. They're playing good defense. Look at that net clipper. Good awareness from Babic, and that one probably going to go long, but it's touched by Carney. So a point for the Tar Heels. Yeah, ball touched off the block. You have to react and try to make that play. But just a heads up shot going high hands. Maria Miggins with her third kill on six swings. Has also chipped in a couple of digs as well as a block. Serve from Swift. And she can't oh. handle that one, got up into the body. Crawford, yeah, that leading was, the way with eight kills. That was just a little bit of a posture thing, you know. I mean, most of the time, middles don't get a ton of defensive work in practice, right? They just kind of serve and go block in the next drill. But I'm sure she'd like to have a little better posture there. As you mentioned, that ball just got up in her grill a little bit. Tahir's looking to get some points and a run here. Good dig as the pancake from Farrell keeps it alive. Free ball for Wake. Shaftmaster wins the jump ball. Yep. 
And when you're playing aggressive defense, sometimes you're just sticking out an arm, sticking out a wrist, or maybe even an elbow just to kind of keep the ball off the ground. Then ball control starts to factor in. And if you can't control the ball very well, then you're scrambling. And then you give up some overpasses. And, you know, those are things that uh, good teams clean up. Barrett has two of the five aces for the Tar Heels today. Not going to get one there. Wasn't much of a touch, but it was just enough for Frankie to get the kill. <laughs> Boy, she can do no wrong right now. You know, it's a simple recipe if you're Wake Forest. Just keep extending this lead if you can. Set Frankie the ball, you know, serve tough, and let's defend. Hitting 571 in the match today. Barrett will set Shaftmaster. Cocks it across, but too far. Yeah, Second attack error from Mabry. That shot has scored, and she has that shot in her toolbox. She just didn't quite get her hips all the way to the ball. Just didn't quite get the hand contact she wanted. But Wake Forest is giving Foster a ton of volume and serve receive. They're really going after her a ton. Near side, and it's a kill for Thurman. <laughs> and how about that? Thurman running all the way across the pattern. The hit from the right side. Couldn't really get a look at where she started from, but she started on the left side of the court there, Kyle, and as the ball was served, ran all the way around the court to hit on the right side. The defense really has to track her well in that scenario. Tar Heels could use a run with Shaftmaster at the line. Great pass off a tough serve. Back to the freshman, Thurman. And it's going to be long. going to send us to a break. Wake Forest down 2-0, but playing much better here in the third set. We've been so far in set three, she's been a key cog for their advantage here. And it's just been a variety of different shots and tempos for length. She's been assertive, finding seams on the block and different ways to score. She's really sparked the offense here, Kyle, for the Demon Deacons to come alive here in set three. And that's a big reason why they have the lead that they do. She's got just 14 swings in the match, but she's got eight kills with zero errors. That's the big one. No errors. When she gets it, it's probably going to be a point. Yeah, so far, UNC has no answer for her, and she's in the front court for two more rotations. So just expect her to get the ball and see if you can slow her down. Listed at 6'4", the tallest player on the Demon Deacons roster. Service error going to give the point and the serve to the Tar Heels. That's the sixth against the Demon Deacons today. Yep. The Tar Heels have been targeting Crawford a ton and serve receive. The last few rotations, do they go back at her again? Yep. Handled well, served near side. Carney got it to drop in. Wow. And I love the adjustment that she made. We mentioned it earlier. Wake Forest is setting the ball off the net when they're out of system, which is what you want to do. But then the attackers have to make that adjustment and go high hands and aim for deep perimeter shots. And you know, that high six zone is open against the Tar Heel defense so far. Great shot and great answer right there. Foster left no doubt on that one. Talk about how good Frankie has played for Foster. That's her ninth kill on 16 swings. She has no errors as well. Now Wake Forest should really pay attention to which rotation North Carolina's in because there are some rotations where Foster gets a little more volume than others. And those are the ones where they need to stack their block to the outside. They set near side, Miggins blocked, but it'll go out of bounds. Oh, oh, just out. First time in a while that Carolina has gotten more than just one point. See if they can go on a run here. Two in a row, down by four in set three. Clips the take from Babic. Slide blockers, nobody on the back line. Oh. And we haven't called Sadie Swift's name for a minute, but remember how this match started. Great blocking presence. She's a little late getting to the scene, but look at the move. She really extended that left hand, denied that cross-court shot. Great blocking technique again from number seven. She's been involved in five of the seven Tar Heel blocks this afternoon. Carney with another big swing, just gets the tape to get the point. Well, and I wouldn't say it's a huge advantage in terms of length and height. But Wake Forest does have some taller players that can use that length to hit over the Tar Heel block in certain situations. And you're seeing that start to take shape. I think that's a great adjustment for the offensive attackers 
of Wake Forest. Can they go for those high hands, high deep corners? So far, that's scoring. I told you, Frankie, 6-4. Kearney listed at 6-2. And Dior Charles, who just came in, the freshman, helped on that block, 6-1. Tar Heels going to take a timeout as they find themselves down by five here, late in set number three. You think about adjustments that they're probably discussing. Wake Forest, you're down 0-2. But again, let's wipe the slate clean and just focus on finishing set three, getting back into the match, bigger picture. Frankie's going to continue to get volume. Why not? Let's continue to defend the serve. You know, I think an assistant coach or a teammate might be telling Crawford in her ear, hey, they're obviously targeting you. So maybe make some adjustments based on where the server is. It's a step to the left, step to the right. So you can really hold your own and serve receive. And then in the other huddle, you know, if you're Mike Shaw and his staff, it's really about let's try to string together a mini run. Let's get two, three, four points in a bunch. Maybe we tie it up, we can get some momentum because we're still in the driver's seat. And how did we get there? By smart attacking and great serving. I'm gonna be curious, Kyle, who UNC targets the rest of this set in serve receive. They've had success going at Crawford. I think they might make an adjustment, Wake Forest, either alignment or Crawford individually might make an adjustment, but can Carolina go back to that great service pressure we saw in set one and beginning of set two, maybe mix in a short serve again, you know, just something different. First time Carolina has found themselves down in this match, came in this set. It was at one nothing and Wake Forest has slowly just built this lead out to five. It was as big as six at one point. Now a front row setter for Carolina. You're in a two hitter phase that favors the block. And an ace <laughs> went after Shaftmaster. She hasn't had her best day in the serve receive game. She has not. And Wake has done a good job of kind of yo-yoing between Foster and Shaftmaster. And actually, Kyle, that ball may have been intended for Foster, just kind of tailed and floated into the seam for Shaftmaster to take it. Babbitt sets Swift down the middle, a dig from Farrell. Her eighth of the match. They'll go back to Amani. Another dig from the Deeks. Their defense in this third set has been at a different level. And Carney picks up her ninth kill. Oh my gosh. If you make a great defensive play in the backcourt that converts to a point, your team has to celebrate that. That's one of the hardest things to do in this sport is to just sell out, make a great defensive play. And Wicks made two of them in the last rally. If they continue to play defense like this, they could mount a serious comeback. Carolina got back within three. It was 16-13. Since then, a 4-0 Demon Deacon run. Miggins over the blockers. Farrell sold out coming in. Thought she was going to get the tip. Tip twice, and it falls behind her. Well, I can already hear the discussion here. Farrell's telling Carney, don't reach back. I've got that. <laughs> you know, you don't need to reach back to try to dig that ball from your blocking position. That's a little pet peeve of liberos when blockers reach back to a ball that they have a beat on, right? Carolina able to get three blockers set up there. Second chance, back line swing. And the attack error, just the fourth of this set against Wake Forest. Well, and that decision there by Baker, you know, you just set the middle, it was blocked. If you go with the Bic, the block is still there. So you're going to put Crawford into a double block even if she clears the net. Now, if you set the middle in the middle, she gets blocked. Let's spread it out the next time. Douglas gets her first kill. And how about if Wake Forest can get someone else other than Frankie going here, create that one-two punch maybe going into a set four? It looked like the same play. They, they ran the slide with her to get her out and get her into space. Yep. Maybe they found something that they continued, can continue to use against the heels. They get to the... Cross-court bump set for Shaftmaster. Great block touch. Near side, was that one touched? It was. Point wow. for Crawford and the Demon Deacons. Yep, instant call for the line judge. That's gonna force a timeout. Tar Heels use their second timeout here in this set. Down by seven now. At what point, if you're the... You're down in a big way. You think about that first set, how that went. 
you can control your service pressure and you can control your tenacity or assertiveness on defense, right? And those are two things that you have to ratchet up if you're down 0-2 on the road. And Wake Forest has done that. Except for Babic, two blockers there. Back to uh, Miggins, and she's gonna get the kill. And that's an impressive kill. Getting set twice, but kind of a bang-bang play. Out of system, the block knew you were getting the ball, and to find that outside hand with such authority, that's a great swing by number 11. It's been a quiet day for Miggins, but it's been a productive one. Six kills on 10 swings, couple of digs, and a block. Over Beck on the serve, quick middle, block is there. That's Nolan, the freshman. Boy, and that's such an impressive block in this moment by Nolan. Great pass off a tough serve, one-on-one -on -one in the middle. Usually that favors the offensive player. You know, Charles probably had a good look if she could cut the ball a little bit more, but great one-on-one -on -one stop. Good serve into the body of Farrell. A little out of system. Carolina's going to get an opportunity. That bump set off the mark. Point scoring opportunity now for Wake Forest. Blockers there, but a good job of using them by Crawford. First player in this match to reach double digits in kills. She's got 10. And in this set, Kyle, Wake Forest has done what they need to do. The opportunities that they've had with a few free balls, just a couple, off-speed balls, you know, joust at the net, overpasses, they've taken care of those four or five opportunities, and it's made a big difference. Outside for Shaftmaster. Big dig from Willock. They will set it for Shaftmaster again. Two blockers there. Farrell with a dig. Such impressive stuff. Third time the charm. Nope, they'll go to Miggins near side. She'll tool it and get the kill. And here in the last 10 or so points, what's been working offensively for the Tar Heels has been the right side, right? Whether it's been Miggins or Thurman, the right side has been productive. Well, pretty much for this set. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's a crunch time situation, they set the right side. Thurman there got a piece of it. Shaftmaster gets the kill. Everything was off, shouldn't have been a point, but somehow Mabry turns it into one. She just has so many shots, she sees the court so well, and she disguises things extremely well. You don't really know. 22-19, that's a different feel. 23-19, maybe you get one or two more though, and now it's uh, a little bit dicey if you're on the Wake Forest side. Oh, 100%, you feel the momentum shifting a little to Wake Forest, or to uh, UNC, and <laughs> back it up with an ace right there, so. Wake Forest cannot coast in this situation. They have to stay assertive, communicate with balls in the seam. Yeah. Sixth ace for the Tar Heels. Barrett has three of them. Much better eye tracking there. May with the dig. <laughs> Shaftmaster, big swing off the blockers. May had to play it. Give it to Mabry for a third time. Farrell with a dig. And off the blockers, point Wake Forest. They get to set point. Oh my gosh, is Farrell putting work in or what, Kyle? Just great posture, great read and extension. So impressed with both liberals today. Both they have been factors. Both got digs on that, that set there, that point right there. And if you can continue to play aggressive defense and finish with a point score kill like Wake Forest did, and that's been the recipe this set for their success, you know, we might be in line to go, you know, maybe five, dare I say. Don't want to jinx anything yet, but. <laughs> Nolan gets her sixth kill. As Carolina has some good passing and gets it quickly to the freshman in the middle. If you're Wake Forest, just defend the serve. You don't want to give up an ace in this moment. Shaftmaster leads the Tar Heels in aces. Overpass, Nolan. Near side, there's the ball. Nine in the match for the Tar Heels now. Yeah, you want to stay assertive. I can't fault that swing. You know, great blocking move by the Tar Heels. But how about Baker challenging the joust or the overpass swing to give her team another opportunity? 
It just got a little bit of it, but enough to keep it alive. Yeah, and you know, you want to be able to challenge things late at the net and not give up anything easy. Good rhythm, good high swing, but just a better blocking move by Thurman court and make North Carolina do something to, you know, break this one point that we need. Wake has been up by as many as seven in this set. Just two right now with Shaftmaster on the serve. Good receive, able to get it to the middle, and there's Frankie. She gets the kill. It is her eighth of the match, and it gives Wake Forest their first set win. Level, it was a different match. It's interesting looking at the individual stats. Farrell, 10 digs, and Torrance, 8 for Wake Forest. A couple other players that have gotten involved, but it's mostly those two. The North Carolina side, May, has 10 digs, and then everybody else has gotten involved. The only player without a dig is Sadie Swift, who you wouldn't expect to get a dig <laughs> playing the middle. Well, she had the one opportunity after she served, and you know, just got a little high up in her grill, but come on, Sadie. Crawford on the serve. Carolina should have a chance to get this one over. Free ball for the Demon Deacons. Top of the screen, there's a dig from Shaftmaster. 50-50 ball. Another 50-50. Swift couldn't get it over, and she's going to get called with the double touch. Well, I love how both teams are challenging over digs and over passes. You know, you're not seeing a clean, open net for a blocker if there's an over dig or over pass, and that's just telling your team you're in the fight. You want to extend the rally. Nothing easy is going to happen today. Carolina in system off that serve. Looking to go to the back line was Foster. Carney. Shaftmaster keeps it alive. Back line, huge swing, and another dig for Shaftmaster. And that one is going to be wide. Wake Boy. Forest gets the point. Carolina's playing aggressive defense, but their out-of-system setting in transition has not allowed for many quality swings. You know, Foster had to tip and roll a couple of tight sets. That one, she had a clean look and just hit it wide. That's a factor in this match that Carolina's going to have to watch. If they're out of system, can they get better swing opportunities through better setting? Megan's a swing for Carolina. Carney for Wake. Here's Imani Foster, and she'll get the Tar Heels on the board here in set number four. Yeah, and that's what we're talking about. Much better set in an out-of-system situation usually equals a better swing. That's one area of the game that Carolina needs to focus on in this set to try to put Wake Forest away in four if they can. Carolina gonna pick up an ace. The serve goes to Torrance, couldn't handle it. That's the seventh of the match for the Tar Heels. Yeah, she just needs a little firmer hands in this technique. You know, using the hands assertively in Serve, receive, and passing is okay. You got to get there with your feet. Keep the ball in front of you. This time it goes to Crawford. The slide and the kill. Put it on repeat. And guess who? Yeah. As long as Olivia Frankie's in the front court, if I'm the staff of Wake Forest, set her the ball. <laughs> let's keep it simple, and let's, let, let's not get in our own way. She's up to double-digit kills with 10 now. Carolina goes back to Miggins. Was it touched? It was not. She goes long. And that's already the third attack error against Carolina in this set. And we saw the right side offense for Carolina bear a lot of fruit. Even though they lost set three, that was effective. And so no surprise they went back to it there. I think she'll still get more opportunities. Frankie will put that one into the net and give it back to Carolina. Interesting point of, of note here. Wake Forest this season has not come back from a 2-0 deficit to win a match. There's still a couple of games left. It could happen today, right? It could, and if it does, then, boy, talk about some mental capital that you can take with you in building the confidence, right? Now, you, if you have a match where you have won through a reverse sweep, then if you're ever in the situation again, you can always go back, hey, we did this before. You know, but they got some work to do before we get there. So, and I'm sure the Tar Heels have something to say about that. 
Carney picks up her 10th kill, so three double-digit kills for Wake Forest. Crawford, 11. Frankie and Carney, each 10. Not sure I'd be serving the ball at May a ton, but their block backed it up. Keeps going back to Miggins. Can't get the kill a couple of times in a row. They find themselves down by four here. When you look at the aggressive blocking move by Charles, you know, diving in with the hand, but I think Wake Forest is on to the offense of Carolina. You know, if they can, they're going to try to set that right side because Miggins has had success, and their block is starting to anticipate that. Second attack error or service error against Wake will give it back to North Carolina. Really the only reason that the Tar Heels are in this one early right now. Yeah, it's something you have to track. You want to serve aggressive. If you start getting service errors in bunches, then you need to dial it back a bit. Barrett with a cross court set. Shaftmaster threw two blockers. Gave herself a little bit extra time with that kick while she was in the air and gets the kill. Yeah, and you just look at how effective she is, and even left-handed, you know. Tight set, being able to have the dexterity, the athleticism to make that play. Good pass there, a little bit over the head, though. Looked like they were trying for Charles. They'll go back to Shaftmaster. Blockers there, out of bounds. Mabry's got 10 in the game. Wow. She makes opposing blockers have to have great technique because if you're a little late, if you're off, just, you know, your press isn't timed perfectly, if you're not lined up well, she's going to tool you. And that's something that's, if you're blocking Shaftmaster, you have to be aware of. You need to have great technique to give yourself a chance or she's going to take advantage. Service error ends that 3-0 run for Carolina. As Carney will go back. Quick middle, Nolan couldn't get the kill. A couple of touches for Wake. And no communication. Wow. You hate to see that when you're starting to mount a little bit of a comeback on your home court. You get a free ball, a point scoring opportunity, and just a little bit of hesitation and communication. Wow. <laughs> Who do you think taps out first? I think it's down 7-2 here in the fourth. Creep back to 7-6, and now Wake on a little bit of a run themselves, which forced the Tar Heels to take an early timeout. Yeah, Wake has done a great job of putting some pressure back on North Carolina and making them have to get a run to tie them and maybe take the lead. But you have to play clean in that moment. Nolan with a clean swing. Nobody in front of her. It's her seventh kill. She's made the most out of her opportunities today, Kyle. She hasn't had a ton of sets, but when she's gotten set, she's been effective. 13 swings, seven kills for her. She's also been involved in four of the nine blocks for the Tar Heels. Big swing from Shaftmaster. Set a little bit off the mark. Carolina will have an opportunity. May bump sets that one for Thurman. Well, and that last point just emphasizes how much you have to get a quality swing. So you're out of system off a great serve from Shaftmaster, then you can't really get a good quality swing out of that transition, and that fueled the transition offense for the Tar Heels. Better ball there. Blocker is there, but it's out of bounds. Crawford with a dozen in the game. And you have to love the mentality of Wake Forest. North Carolina has scored a few points, but Wake Forest hasn't really backed down. They're showing the Tar Heels, we're here to battle. You might score a couple of points, get an ace, or maybe a, a flashy kill, but we're still going to be in the fight. Forrest yet to commit a attack error in this set. Hitting 417 so far. Wow. A whistle, net violation against Carolina. I thought Wake Forest was fortunate in how that, that series or that rally started. I, I'm not sure why anybody would serve May. <laughs> I, I'm just scratching my head at why you would serve the libero of the other team, especially these liberos. I'm sure. Farrell will change up her zone here. Goes to Foster. The set is for Foster, and the kill is for Foster. I love that she went back down the line. She had just missed that opportunity. A few
few points ago, and she has that line. You look at how the block is presenting. She has that alley to hit, and she can hit it well if the set's there. Great look from number eight. May serving for the Tar Heels. There's a block from Foster. Wow. <laughs> 10 in the match now for Carolina. Boy, what a great dynamic. Look at the footwork, the extension, turning that outside hand in, giving no room for Douglas. Great technique by Foster. Carolina average is just a little over two blocks per set, so playing above the average today. Great hustle, and they get it across. Where's Frankie? Right there, May, or excuse me, Mabry on the back line. Jump ball. Foster got it across. Take the Team scrambling. Out. Swing for Thurman, and it's going to be a point. Carolina ties this one up. Wow. We talk about great defense and what tenacity can bring on defense. Look at the hustle here by Thurman and Foster just keeping the ball alive. That mentality is kind of counterpunching now, right? Wake Forest raised their defense. That was a big factor in the set three win. And now you're seeing Carolina match that defensive intensity. Tar Heels looking for their first lead since the second set. And they're not going to have it as May commits the service error. Ninth of the match against Carolina. Now, offensively for Wake Forest, they were a little right side heavy, kind of forcing the right side to Douglas there. She's off off the court now, but I think they need to go back to Frankie, Kyle. Tar Heels with the back line swing for Shaftmaster. She ties it at a dozen. Such a weapon to have in your back pocket when you need it, right? Just to play that ultimate trump card. You know, they've used this set in great situations, right? They're not writing it all the time, so you're not quite sure when they're going to go with it, but She's been effective, Shaftmaster, when they've set that ball to her out of the bit. Coming off one of her best games hitting-wise in her career. Actually, it was the best, 538 Friday against Virginia Tech. Quick over and a heads-up play by Frankie right there. That great shot. She saw the blockers in her zone in transition with that length, just that high, sharp cutback tip. That's going to score a lot. At the very least, it's going to get them out of system because the setter's got to dig it. Carolina has tied it up a couple of times. Can't get over the hump to take the lead. Serve from Crawford. Swift with a bump set, and here's a free ball. And the slide for Frankie. Yep, and you're seeing a trend now really take shape. I think what Wake Forest has been trying to do for most of the match is to back Imani Foster up and serve receive. Make her retreat on the court to pass the ball and get her out of rhythm if she gets set. If you do that, then you usually get a weaker response or a weaker shot back, which is kind of that free ball tip we just saw. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see Crawford go with that deep third serve, back Foster up and do the same thing. Went to Shaftmaster. Set is for Imani Foster. Hammers it through the blockers and gets the kill. <laughs> That's just pure power by Foster there. And when you get that kind of shoulder load and through the ball so fast, look how fast she gets through the ball. Just beating that seam hand of Frankie. Impressive stuff from number eight. Dozen kills in the match after leading the team with 13 Friday. There's Carney with a kill. She says, you can do it, I can too. Wow. She's got 11. It's just a slugfest at this point. Well, both outside hitters for really both teams are showing they can be effective in this moment. And if you've got that pin battle going on, you know, then you're counterpunching. And then it just becomes maybe can your block make a play? Can your defense just make one more dig, steal a kill, extend the rally? Because, again, we're getting back to that back and forth seesaw battle here in set four. Babic does a good job of getting that one over for Carolina. Back to Kearney goes Wake Forest, but Swift is there. Megan's joined her. Yeah, that's just a tough spot to be in. If you're under set, high out of system, you don't have many options, and it's a little bit easier to set your block up, you know, when you're in that in that moment. But you look at this, it's high inside. 
if you cut back down the line, you've got to be really aggressive with it, otherwise you're probably blocked. 13 assists, seven digs for Babic. Barrett, the other setter for the Tar Heels, 23 sets assists, nine digs. There's another service error. It'll give it back to Wake Forest, though. That's now 10 in the match against Carolina. Yeah, and, and that's just a, a tough time for it. You know, Overbeck wanted to be ag aggressive, but you qualify that. Is not a good miss or a bad miss? And anything below the top of the tape is not a good miss. I'm sure she wants that one back. Good serve from Baker. Wake Forest couldn't take advantage of that overpass. Babbitt for Nolan, second time, she'll get the kill. Boy, and you've got a front row setter with Babbitt. You've got Nolan in front. That should be a solid double block on her. The blockers are paying attention, and there was. They were just late with their press. And so it's one of those situations, Kyle, where you saw it, you set your defense up to defend it, but just couldn't execute. Nolan with eight kills, hitting 500 for Carolina. Good serve from the Tar Heels. They've got a chance to tie it up. Set the deke with Nolan. Thurman couldn't get the kill. May with a bump set for Shaftmaster. She sees an opening. Great defense as Carney gets the kill, uh, the dig. Shaftmaster's big swing wow. this time, but sends it long. And I don't know that there wasn't four contacts anyway. If and Shaw going over to grab the block right now. Yeah, well, a couple of things you could argue at the end of that rally. One, was there a touch? But also, if I'm Wake Forest, and for any reason you might have something overturned or lose that rally, you could always point to, I think there might have been four contacts on the Tar Heels because as that free ball went over, I can't remember Kyle who was, who was just off the net there, but there was a Tar Heel player about five feet off the net who kind of reached back. And it looked like that ball may have grazed her arm. And if that was the case, there could have right here. Was, was there, a, it looked like Thurman kind of put her arm after the dig by Foster. You know, in in live time and real play, I thought there might have been kind of a micro touch, which would have made a four contacts, but maybe not. Um, but, you know, again, smart play here by Coach Shaw. If there's any chance there was a touch, which is, I believe, what we're challenging. Yes, you have then, to touch on the shaft master swing. You know, it's kind of a pseudo timeout. And this is the third challenge from Carolina. You get two, but if you win, you retain one, which they did on that second pancake. Correct, correct. Um, it's actually how they won set two. It was overturned and it was the 25th point for Carolina. Yeah, yeah, that did wind up uh, sealing set two victory for them. And This is a tough one. I think at this point, if you're a referee trying to see touch on a swing like that, it's either ball rotation or a finger move. Correct. Uh, it's, if you can't clearly see a finger move, then you look at the ball rotation. Does it change spin in any way to indicate that it came into contact? Oh, a net. A net, net violation. violation. Wow. Okay. So that does reverse the point. Uh, so Shaw, who was clearly upset, wanted the review, gets the call, and that's a big one. It ties it up at 16. Yeah, that could be a huge momentum shift here if Carolina can back it up with another point or two to make it a three-point run. You can go back to that challenge then and say that was a turn of the tide. Yeah, a swing point. Yeah. So Barrett will be serving. And remember, she's got three aces already today. Has been the best server for Carolina. Yeah, and, you know, you think about it being fourth on the team in aces she had 13 coming into the match she's very capable as a server sets it for shaftmaster near side a little off kilter and just pops it over carney big swing finds a back <laughs> corner boy she has been so impressive in certain spots today and she's hit some angles that you just think how in the heck i mean just a sliver of a line and to hit it past the back row defender and right back and right in the corner Great shot by 21. Where does the offense come from Wake with both Carney and Frankie on the bench right now? Nolan, great dig from Farrell. Crawford sends it over. Shaftmaster near side, there's the blocker. They don't need offense when you got defense. Charles with the block. 
Seventh of the match for Wake. A great step in block by Charles. And those are momentum plays. If you can get a stuff block or even a deny against the other team's premier attacker, that's a momentum play. That's worth two or three points in my book. We'll see if Wake Forest can back that up. Barron tries to get over quickly in two. Charles was ready for it. Back to Shaftmaster. Farrell with the dig. Crawford blocked. Oh, wow. And a point for Carolina. Yeah. You just have to question the decision there by Crawford to try to go for that off-speed ball low. You know, if you're going to try to execute that shot, you have to get under it. You have to get above your shoulder to be able to clear the block. Definitely once she wants back, especially after an aggressive dig by Farrell. Overpass on the serve. Foster couldn't get enough of a touch to get the kill, but Carolina will get a swing. Second chance, Nolan looking for the back line. And Wake will get the kill. Oh. We talked about how important out of system efficiency is gonna be in your offense, and how many out of system swings have we seen in the last few rallies? Quite a few, and if you can get a good swing that clears the block, it's probably either gonna score or put you in a great position to extend the rally. Great shot by Douglas there. She picks up her third kill. Tice at top of the screen for Thurman. Now that ball was a little tight, Kyle. That's when the block really has to press and make sure you have good elevation. But it didn't matter. Thurman just great vision, fast through the ball. Look how fast he gets through the ball on that attempt. Boy, if your timing off just a little bit as a blocker, you're getting tooled. May now serving. Able to keep that one alive at least momentarily off of the swing from Frankie. Go to her again. Come near side, Douglas, and she gets the kill. And now you're starting to see a little one-two punch develop, and too bad for Wake Forest. Douglas is going off the court. She's been hot the last couple of swings. But how about May digging Frankie in the middle of that rally? That's the first time we've seen something off Frankie's hand not result in the kill in pretty much right away. Time, yeah. yeah. Back to the freshman Thurman, tried to go over top of the blockers. May dives to keep it alive. 50-50 ball, there's a net violation against Carolina. Fell in for a point either way. It's a three-point lead for Wake Forest. They starting to pull away here a little bit at the right time and late. It's just been great defense, really on both sides, but I think you have to tip the hat a little bit more to Wake Forest because the defensive intensity is what got them back into the match. Right, that set the tone for set three. Both teams playing scrappy and tenacious defense. Look at Farrell, what she's brought to her team, the fire and the grid. We just saw those are points typically for Carolina. And when you're down two sets to nothing, you have to have those digs. You do. It, it, it's the mentality of I'm stealing kills. You're not going to score if the ball comes anywhere in my zone. Foster with the kill. <laughs> Oh my. 13 for her, that's a team high. I have no idea how that ball got through the block. We need to see that because she hit that straight down. It wasn't through, it was over. Oh my gosh. I mean, there was so much line given there, seen on the replay. But if you can thump a ball like that at a defender, the blockers need to make an adjustment. Back-to-back -back matches with 13 kills now for Imani Foster. They're gonna go back to her again through the block this time. Yep. Right in the hot hand. So in this moment, just in these last two points, if you're Wake Forest, you have to start cheating your block to Foster. I, you know, sometimes players and coaches can kind of outsmart themselves in this moment. I don't think you need to use her as a decoy or go anywhere else right now if you're Carolina. Get Foster the ball again, and then Wake Forest has to recognize that and dare someone else to beat you because She's one point away from tying this up. She can give another kill. How about this stat line for Foster? 14 kills. Talked about the bright future for both of these young teams. And with North Carolina, the players they would lose. Listed as a grad transfer, but she only needed three years to graduate from Charlotte. She'll be back next year. Wow. <laughs> Carolina with a chance to tie this up. Bump set from Babbitt. Right to the X. Wow. <laughs> She can do no wrong, and who else? You, you had to assume she was going to get the ball, especially out of system. 
that's a great shot that if you're Wake Forest, you want to you wanna defend those off speeds, but I love that shot from outside hitters because I don't think enough outside hitters use that three-quarter speed roll to the meat of the court. That ball will score a lot. And again, Carolina ties it up, but Wake pushes themselves back out in front. Crawford picks up her 14th kill. I absolutely love, Kyle, that Crawford was assertive there, right? Even if the ball was denied by the block, it was a good quality swing to the deep third. They wound up scoring, great play. She's got a game high, 43 attacks. Back to Thurman, or excuse me, to Foster. Off the tips of Shaftmaster and out of bounds. Back to back points for Crawford and the Deeks. And Wake Forest is playing the smart. They serve Foster deep, get her to back up. She can't get a great swing on the set that she had. That made your transition offense a little bit easier. Good recipe. And an ace now for Crawford. Yep. Carolina went on a 3-0 run to tie it up. Now a 3-0-1 from Wake. They've got themselves set point. Yeah, and it's the exact same scouting report we just talked about. If a team, if a player's being dominant, a good strategy is to go at that player, go right at her. Just the fourth ace of the match there for Wake. Foster with the swing. She'll keep North Carolina alive here in set four. And I love what Shaftmaster did there. She recognized that they were gonna go at Foster. So if you noticed, right before that ball was served, they both took a cheat step over so that Shaftmaster could take a step in and pass the ball. Good adjustment, but heads up play. Deeks run the slide and get the kill. Who else? 13 for Frankie, and we're going to a fifth set. Carolina wins the first two. Wait, takes the next two. We both had success. We both know what each other presents. It's just who wants it more. If you're not familiar with volleyball, fifth set is to 15. Still got to win by two, though. And if Wake Forest does that 14 more times, they may just take this one. Frankie hammers her 14th kill home. Boy, just a huge line there. Chaffmaster just didn't quite get out enough. And you can't blame her a ton because Frankie's gone cross court quite a bit from the slide. But man. No answer for number two so far offensively. And that's about the only error she's made. Literally, it's the only error, she, error she's made. 13, or excuse me, 14 kills, zero attack errors for her still. Well, and I think it's kind of smart how Randy Smart, no pun intended, started this set with her in the right front because you normally rotate two and a half times, right, in a fifth set. And so if that holds true statistically, that would put Frankie getting into the front court at the end of this set, which is what you want. Error from Shaftmaster gives it back to Wake. Baker sends it across. There's Foster for the kill. <laughs> now that time, Wake Forest only used half of a recipe. They got her, they got Foster to pass the ball deep, but then the block couldn't really, really set up well, and there was a seam there, and credit Foster for seeing that and taking advantage. If there's any seam in the block and Foster sees it, she's probably going to score. Carolina with the lead, 3-2. This is the first time they've had a lead since they won the second set, 25-22. Yeah, and I believe our first ball handling error of the match. May with a serve to the back for Carney. Down the middle in the kill <laughs> for great Charles. Pass. Yeah, it started with a great pass and Serving and passing is going to bear fruit if you win that battle at any point, but it definitely in the fifth set. Everything ratches up one more level. You know, there's one more notch of kind of that service pressure, and can you pass well? I love how Charles separated herself a little bit from the setter there, creating some space. That ensures a little bit more that you're going to be one-on-one, -on -one, so smart route. Just her second kill, but she's been involved at the net. Remember that solo block against Shaftmaster? Yep. She's got four total blocks, which leads the way for Wake Forest. Thurman. Willock there on the back side. Here's an opportunity for Wake. Overpass from May. Down the middle. Great coverage. Trying to go back to Charles again. Again, the block there for Carolina. Farrell keeps it alive. <laughs> Finally, Wake gets the point. What a rally. Oh, my gosh, Kyle. 
These last few sets, it's plays like this that have kept Wake Forest alive and not allowed Carolina to win. Oh, and you know, earlier in that rally, Crawford fell down, and she still got up and hit a ball in transition, but it just shows you if you can stay focused and keep working, good things happen. I love how Farrell's playing. Back to Foster, had the blocker set up. Top of the screen for Crawford. Did that one stay in? It yep. did. Uh, as soon as this ball left her hand, I think she was disappointed that she didn't, wasn't as aggressive as she needed to be. You know, if you're under set as an outside hitter and you're going after the outside hand, you have to be really aggressive. So there's no chance of that ball coming back into the court. Carolina with a dozen blocks now in the match. Good serve there from Babic. She'll set it for Miggins now, and that one drops in. Wow. Back to back, Tar Heel points, they're back in front. That great swing by Miggins, but it resulted from a broken play from Wake Forest. Eight kills in the match for Miggins. Swift kept that one alive. Shaftmaster from the back line. Great block touch. Through the blockers, Swift and Foster were there. Boy, the way this fifth set's going here early, it's almost who's going to get the ball last. And whoever <laughs> can put two points together, <laughs> you know, might wind up being the victor. Farrell back to serve. One assist away from a double-double. She's got nine assists, 13 digs. Through the blockers, whistle. And a violation against Wake gives it back to North Carolina. Sometimes when you really want that stop block, you can be a little too tight to the net. You can press a little too far, catch the net with your wrist or your arm on the way down. You know, and smart discussion here by Randy Smart, the head coach of Wake Forest. Looks like she might challenge this. Well, sometimes, even if you know the call is correct, you just want to clarify and kind of slow things down for a minute. Looks like she is challenging. Um, when, oh. And you have the challenge, as you said it earlier, it's a kind of a timeout without using one of your timeouts. Well, it wasn't an obvious net call. Oh, there it is. Yep, yeah. yep. Uh, now that I see it on the slow-mo, right? Slow-mo always makes it easier. Yeah, they'll get Douglas here. Right there on the touch. Yeah, he's got that left arm grazing the net, but you know, at the set, pretty clear. Yep, that, that's a record time from what we've seen so far with the replays today. <laughs> Coach Smart just snapped her head back. You already figured that out? Oh, all right. <laughs> but that was so obvious. I, I don't think you needed to take more than one look at it. Correct. Though. And, you know, the way this match has gone, again, you don't want to have. You don't want to give up a two or three point run right now. That's one thing you don't want to do. And if you can slow momentum a little bit, kind of that pseudo timeout again, um, that was probably part of her thought process. Buffer receives the serve, gets the set. It goes long, no touch. Carolina with a two point lead. And the passing for Wake Forest has broken down the last two or three points. And that's been a key factor because you can't get Frankie involved. You know, you're a little more one-dimensional, so credit the service pressure for UNC. See if Foster goes back to Crawford instead into the net. Boy, and that was pretty huge. If UNC is up 8-5, that's a lot different than 7-6 right now. We'll see. Torrance will go back to serve. See who Torrance targets. Does she go back at Foster or at Shaftmaster? Goes to Shaftmaster, passes it well to Babbitt. Back set for Miggins and an easy one there for Carolina. 8-6 lead, we'll take a quick break here as they switch sides. Fifth set between the Tar Heels and the Deeks. We talked about it during the break. You mentioned it a couple of times before we went in. It's been the serving from Carolina that has gotten them back out in front here. In the short term, 100%, you think about the last four or five points, and this two-point spread here, the difference has been the serving for Carolina. They have asserted some service pressure, gotten Wake Forest out of system, taken one of the strengths off the table offensively for Wake Forest in that they haven't been able to set Olivia Frankie, who's been unstoppable. So 
you know, great service pressure has allowed them to hold this little lead. These next couple of points now, Kyle, are going to be pretty huge. If Wake Forest can get back to 8-7 or even tie it up, you know, then we're back in that dogfight. But if Carolina can get another point or two, now it's a lot of pressure and a very tall mountain to climb if you're Wake Forest. So Marissa Meyerhofer in to serve for Carolina out of the timeout. Deep serve, overpass, two Tar Heels there, and they'll win. Miggins yeah. and Nolan. Wow. Great deep third serve. Coming up high. Service pressure, Kyle. Boy, the Tar Heels are putting on a, a mini clinic right now with their serve. Set it to the near side for Crawford this time. She's going to get a swing and beat the block. Boy, and... Wake Forest desperately needed that to try to keep some pace here. You know, if you're down 10-7, it's a lot different. Yeah, the fifth set can get away from you quickly it, because it, it's just a 15. It sure can. And, you know, you blink and it can be over. So Wake Forest has to really buckle down, keep up that assertive defense that got them to tie it two sets all. Got to play great defense here. Set for Nolan, a little bit off on the timing. Another opportunity. Foster will send it over. Wake tried to run that slide. Timing was off there. Yep. Not a great connection. Shaftmaster somehow oh. went back over off of Kearney. Back to Shaftmaster again. Blockers there and a net violation they're gonna wow. call. The second touch is where they got Nolan. Yeah, you, you think about sometimes in volleyball, you just have to defend yourself, right? It's not about digging the target, it's just protecting your head or your face and we saw Carney do it there but within that rally you saw a few things we saw just the craftiness and the veteran display of shot selection by Shaftmaster she really made Wake Forest defend the entirety of the swing for the fences but you can't give the opponent anything really easy if you have to a smart thing to do is to go at the back row setter and make the setter play it Frankie to serve. Babbick sets it down the middle for Foster. Huge swing and a big dig from Farrell. This time it's Mabry. And that one's going to go long. Wow. Tied up at nine. Oh, my. Boy, are you having fun yet watching this <laughs> ACC battle? Going five sets, Wake Forest on the road, trying to solidify their seed, potentially NCAA tournament. UNC playing spoiler if they can. Two teams going toe to toe. There's a solo block for Kearney and Wake has the lead. Boy, Three straight points for the Demon Deacons. The right side offense for Carolina has been productive today. And maybe Kearney had a better read on Miggins making that defensive blocking move. But Wake all of a sudden getting that momentum back on their side. That's their eighth block. So digging and blocking the defense, helping them out. And there's the one thing that Kearney has had an issue with in this game. That's her third service error. Well, you know, Crawford probably had a little adrenaline right there. And, you know, you can kind of taste it maybe, kind of see the finish line. And maybe adrenaline got the best of her there. But we've got to take care of this pass if you're Wake Forest. Serve from Barron, a deep one, and it's going to be an ace. Wow. <laughs> Great effort from Wake Forest. Did everything they could, but the fourth ace of the match. Watch this for Barron. Off the hand of Torrance, and you just, I'm sorry, of Barron, and they're going at Crawford, and you think about just the, how hard they're having to work just to try to keep that from being an ace. Great effort by Farrell, but it's so difficult when you're that deep in the court. See, you know, losing to them on the road, I don't think is going to have them drop drastically. A little bit out of system, and an opportunity for the Tar Heels to extend the lead. The freshman is there and blocked. Yep, off the block, back into Thurman. But a heads-up play by Carney, right? They were out of system. She, what did she do? She tipped the ball back to Barron making them out of system, making the Tar Heels out of system, and a little bit easier to defend. So heads up play by Carney. And for Wake, the last three points they've scored in this set have come from defense. Yep. 
The serve to Foster. Set for Shaftmaster. Blockers were there. She gets it over. Out of system. Carney with a swing. May with the dig. And Foster kept it alive. Nobody else could get to it. Wow. Great back out in front. Heads up play by transition defense. And you just look at that effort by May. She was just millimeters off of keeping that ball high into the court. Both these liberos trying to will their teams to a victory. May with 16 digs, Farrell with 15. Shaftmaster with a little bit of a clearer lane, but still had the block. Overpass, Nolan. Wow. She's got nine kills. Torrance just had that dig get away from her, got a little bit deep, causing the over dig. Easy put away from you're, Nolan. You're watching at home. Make sure you tune in for these two next week because they play each other. It's their very next match. And regardless of how this one finishes, that's going to be an exciting rematch. <laughs> oh, 100%. If we get any kind of a battle in round two as we're getting here in round one, it's going to be worth tuning into. Second opportunity. Corny gets the kill. She's up to 14. Wow. How does she sneak this through when you just need that little sliver of the cross court? You didn't get a great contact on it necessarily, but great play by 21. And now what happens? Now you've got a three hitter rotation with a back row setter for Wake Forest. There's Foster, it trickles over. <laughs> when things are going your way, they're going your way. And I, I was just thinking, you know, Wake Forest is in a good rotation now with a back row setter. They have three options, and, you know, Foster just with a great deceptive and executed short tip that gets a, the net kisser. Game high, 19 kills for Imani Foster. Great pass. Set down the middle, and Charles gets the kill. Wow. <laughs> Match point for Wake Forest. You have to credit Wake Forest for handling serve receive the last couple of times they've been on the money. And handling the service pressure, kind of flipping that script, has given them match point. See where Whitlock goes with this serve. It's to Foster. Mabry stepped in front. The set is for Foster. Kept alive. Chance to end it here, and it's into the net in attack oh, area wow. against Douglas. Yeah, and you hate to see that a ball that goes into the tape. In a match like this, why wouldn't we go even further than the 15? Well, let's go to overtime, right? <laughs> keep it going here, a few more points. It'll be Babic to serve for Carolina, the lefty. The serve to Crawford. They set for Crawford. May with a dig. Here's Foster blocked at the net. <laughs> Third block this set for Wake Forest. They're up to 10 in the match. Kyle, how opportunistic has Charles been with her blocking today? We haven't called her name a lot, but when we have, it's been in key moments. She's been involved in five of those 10 blocks. Second time that Wake Forest has had a match point. Babbitt to Foster. And it's deep. Wake Forest completes the reverse sweep and takes this one three to two. Wow, impressive stuff.